The Secret of the Rosary, Part 8 Thirteenth Rose The Our Father Continued Each word of the Lord's Prayer is a tribute we pay to the perfections of God. We honor His fertility by the name of Father. Father, Thou who throughout eternity dost beget a Son, who is God like Thee, eternal, consubstantial with Thee, who is the very same essence as Thee, and is of like power and goodness and wisdom as Thou art, Father and Son, who from Your mutual love produce the Holy Spirit, who is God like unto you, three persons, but one God. Our Father. This means that he is the Father of mankind because he has created us and continues to sustain us, and because he has redeemed us. He is also the merciful Father of sinners, the Father who is the friend of the just, and the glorious Father of the blessed in heaven. When we say, Who art? By these words we pay tribute to the infinity and immensity and fullness of God's essence. God is rightly called He who is. That is to say, He exists of necessity, essentially and eternally, because He is the being of beings and the cause of all beings. He possesses within himself, in a supereminent degree, the perfections of all beings, and he is in all of them by his essence. By his presence and by his power, but without being bound by their limitations, we honor his sublimity and his glory and his majesty by the words who art in heaven, that is to say, who is seated as on a throne, holding sway over all men by thy justice. When we say, hallowed be thy name, we worship God's holiness, and we make adoration to his kinship, and bow to the justice of his laws by the words, thy kingdom come praying that men will obey him on earth as the angels do in heaven. We show our trust in his providence by asking for our daily bread, and we appeal to his mercy when we ask for the forgiveness of our sins. We look to his great power when we beg him not to lead us into temptation, and we show our faith in his goodness by our hope that he will deliver us from evil. The Son of God has always glorified his Father by his works, and he came into the world to teach men to give glory to him. He showed men how to praise him by this prayer, which he taught us with his own lips. It is our duty, therefore, to say it often. We should say it reverently and attentively, and in the spirit in which our Lord taught it. Fourteenth Rose, the Our Father continued. We make as many acts of the noblest Christian virtues as we pronounce words when we recite attentively this divine prayer. In saying, Our Father who art in heaven, we make acts of faith, adoration, and humility. When we ask that his name be hallowed and glorified, we show a burning zeal for his glory. And when we ask for the spread of his kingdom, we make an act of hope. By the wish that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we show a, a spirit of perfect obedience. In asking for our daily bread, we practice poverty of spirit and detachment from worldly goods. When we beg him to forgive us our sins, we make an act of sorrow for them. By forgiving those who have trespassed against us, we give proof of the virtue of mercy in its highest degree. 
through asking God's help in all our temptations, we make acts of humility, prudence, and fortitude. As we wait for him to deliver us from evil, we exercise the fruit of patience. Finally, while asking for all these things, not for ourselves alone, but also for our neighbor and for all members of the church, we are carrying out our duty as true children of God. We are imitating him in his love, which embraces all men, and we are keeping the commandment of love of neighbor. If we mean in our hearts what we say with our lips, and if our intentions are not at variance with those expressed in the Lord's Prayer, then by reciting this prayer we hate all sin, and we observe all of God's laws. For whenever we think that God is in heaven, infinitely removed from us by the greatness of his majesty, as we place ourselves in his presence, we should be filled with overwhelming reverence. Then the fear of the Lord will chase away all pride, and we will bow down before God in our utter nothingness. When we say the name Father, and remember that we owe our existence to God by the means of our parents, and even our knowledge to our teachers, who hold a place, and are the living images of God, then we cannot help paying them honor and respect, or to be more exact, honoring God in them. Nothing then would be farther from our thoughts than to be disrespectful to them or hurt them. We are never farther from blaspheming then when we pray that the holy name of God may be glorified. If we really look upon the kingdom of God as our heritage, we cannot possibly be attached to the things of this world. If we sincerely ask God that our neighbor, neighbor may have the very same blessings that we ourselves stand in need of, it goes without saying that we will, have, we will give up all hatred, quarreling, and jealousy. And of course, if we ask God each day for our daily bread, we shall learn to hate gluttony and lavishness, which thrive in rich surroundings. While sincerely asking God to forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us, we no longer give way to anger and thoughts of getting even. We return good for evil and really love our enemies. To ask God to save us from falling into sin when we are tempted, it is to give proof that we are fighting laziness and that we are genuinely seeking means to root out vicious habits and to work out our salvation. To pray God to deliver us from evil is to fear his justice, and this will give us true happiness. For since the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, it is through the virtue of the fear of God that men avoid sin.